ProPresenter makes it possible to not only control complex visual presentations, but also control other production gear like stage lighting without leaving the ProPresenter interface. One widely used software-based lighting program is LightKey on the Mac that we're gonna set up in this video. Now, while I'm not able to create a video about every app out there, I hope the basic principles here can help you learn how to set up ProPresenter with any lighting program, not just LightKey. You can even control hardware-based lighting consoles with ProPresenter as long as that console can accept the correct commands. So as long as ProPresenter can communicate with your gear, you can control it. First, let's look at LightKey and get our lighting software set up. I'm gonna give you a basic overview here, but you can find more detailed information and video tutorials at the LightKey website. So I would encourage you to go check that out and learn more about the program after this video. Now, the first thing that we need to do is head over to the LightKey website and download and install the program. Now, this free download comes with 24 channels of lighting, but if you need more channels based on your setup and how many lighting fixtures and DMX channels you're using, you can get a affordable yearly license to match your need and give you more channels. Now, the next thing that you need to do is you need to actually connect your computer to your lighting gear. If you're coming from a traditional environment where you have a hardware-based lighting console, you need a way to hook up your computer to your lighting gear. And on the LightKey website, they have a listing of all of the different interfaces that you can use because one of the great things about LightKey is they give you a lot of different options on how to connect your computer to your lighting gear. I picked up this DMX USB Pro interface, which is really affordable and works great with LightKey. Now, when you launch LightKey and create a new project, it's going to bring you to this patching window. You just need to know the DMX addresses and the types of fixtures that you're patching in so that LightKey can use them properly. Now, there's a list of generic fixtures here that you can look through, or if you know your fixture name, you can just type it in. So on my desk here, I have this 12P hex fixture, and it starts at DMX address 80. And so I'm just going to drag and drop that in. And this fixture can run in a few different mode so I could select which mode mine's running in six channel mode and then we could give it a short name if we wanted to so I'm just going to type in desk here and then we can say how many of those fixtures are there and do we want to patch multiple consecutively and so you can see those would be all added in one after each other um, but we only need to add in one so we'll just hit patch. And then this is going to bring us to our main visualizer where we can lay out our lighting fixtures just like we see them in our space. So you'll see here I have like a back wall of some fixtures. I have some overhead. So this is kind of over my stage. And then I have my front white lights here. So I'm just going to take my desk light and just put it right in the middle of my stage. So that works and then we can hit done. And now you can see we have all of our lights here and you can see how they're currently set. And if we look at our shot here, we have our light here with our blue uh, desk light. Now I can go to my design view and I could like dim that light down a little bit so we can see it better on camera. And then we could, you know, change up the color there. And so I'm just kind of scrolling through and you can see how that color is changing of our lighting fixture. Now that we have LightKey configured, let's open up ProPresenter and set up a connection between LightKey and ProPresenter. We're going to do this by using MIDI. Now, you might be wondering, what is MIDI actually? MIDI is the Musical Instrument Digital Interface, and it's commonly used for musical instruments and audio gear, but it's also used in a wide variety of ways throughout all of production. Now, MIDI allows hardware devices and software programs to send and receive MIDI notes at varying intensities across different channels. Now, don't get overwhelmed by that. These are just ways to send data between devices and programs and that data can be used to control them. It's as simple as that. It's a way to talk between different devices and programs. So let's add a MIDI device inside of ProPresenter. So first let's go to ProPresenter and to Preferences and let's go to Devices. Here's where we can add in our MIDI devices by clicking this plus icon in the bottom left corner and I'm gonna add in a MIDI device. I'm going to name this MIDI device LightKey because we can have multiple MIDI devices and I want to remember that this one is for LightKey. I'm going to set this to auto reconnect so once our communication is set up between LightKey and ProPresenter, every time we restart ProPresenter it's going to automatically reconnect. 
And then the next thing is the most important. Do we want this to be a source or a destination? And then you'll see a listing of all of the different MIDI devices that our computer can see. So you can see that we have our computer's MIDI bus. You'll see that my audio interface has a MIDI bus and you'll see light keys MIDI bus. Now, do we wanna receive MIDI from a program? So we wanna receive uh, MIDI information from light key or do we wanna send information to light key? We wanna send it to light key. So we're gonna set the destination as light keys input. Then we can hit back and we can connect our MIDI device. So now ProPresenter has a MIDI device that is sending information to light keys input. Now we can close this out and let's create a new macro for our lighting command. And the reason we're gonna use macros is because these are a great way to set up presets that we can use over and over throughout our presentations instead of having to remember different MIDI notes and values. And you'll see how that works here as we set this up. So let's add a new macro and I'm gonna call this Lights Song 1. And now we can right click on this macro and we can add an action. And you'll see one of our actions we have available is a communication action and you'll see light key, which is what we named the device we created and we wanna send a MIDI note on. And now we can choose what channel we're gonna send, which note we're gonna send, and at what intensity. I'm gonna just set this to channel one, and we can set this as C2, the first note. And then the most important thing is that our intensity is more than zero. You can't choose zero, but you can choose any intensity above it. Now, just to make it easy as I'm setting these up, I'm just gonna always choose the intensity of one uh, so that I don't have to scroll through the list any further. So for our first communication between ProPresenter and light key, we're using channel one, note C2 at intensity of one. So now ProPresenter is sending MIDI information every time we click on that macro to light key, but light key doesn't know what to do with that information. So we need to tell light key to trigger song one every time it receives that MIDI note. Let's move the ProPresenter interface over so that we can see our light key interface. And I'm gonna right click on song one here and you'll see one of the options is external control. And we have an option to add a trigger. So I'm gonna say add trigger. And now it's waiting for a trigger, some sort of action that light key is receiving to tell it to do something. So in ProPresenter, we're gonna click on our macro with our communication action. And when we click that, you'll see that channel one C2 showed up and now light key knows what to do with that MIDI information it's being sent. So now if I select light song one, it's going to trigger song one inside light key. So let's click that and you'll see that it's faded over and it's changing our lights and switching that to song one. Now we could add another one for our first cue. So let's do that. So we're gonna right click on this and we're gonna say duplicate. And then let's right click and rename this. So let's uh, rename this and we're gonna just say maybe walk in. And that's maybe our walk in lighting. And now I can right click on this and say edit action MIDI note on. And I wanna change the MIDI note because we can't use the same MIDI note for everything. So I'm just gonna change the note of this to C sharp two. And again, I wanna make sure that intensity is at one. So now this note is different than this note. So now we can do the same thing we did a second ago. I'm gonna right click on Q. I'm gonna say external control, add trigger. And now we can say walk in and now that's received C sharp two. So now if I hit lights walk in, you'll see that it goes back to that first Q. And if I hit song one, it's gonna to go to that other Q. Now the one thing that we need to watch out for is that all of these triggers inside light key are set to toggle by default. And so if we click on this icon up here, this is our external control window, we'll see all of our different actions. So I'm gonna go into our MIDI actions here and I'm gonna look at my light key input and you'll see all of our different actions here. So under MIDI and our input of light key, you'll see our different actions here. And you'll see that we have our C2 and our C sharp two and what it's doing, but you'll see the behavior is set to toggle, which could cause a problem because if we select that cue again, it's going to turn it off. So if I hit song one again, you'll see 
all of the lights turned off. We don't want it to do that. We want it to just turn on and only turn on. So let's fix that. So we're gonna go back to this interface and instead of the behavior being toggle, we just want it to be activate. And we're gonna do that for both of these. So we'll go to our this other one, we'll set that to activate. So now if you click it a bunch of times, it's only gonna turn it on. So you can see how we can adjust those from that toggle to activate using this external control window. Now I went ahead and created a few more song lighting scenes inside LightKey and I created a few more macros inside ProPresenter to control them. I did it just like I showed you. Now let's use all of those to create our playlist inside ProPresenter and see how easy it is to utilize these on a weekly basis. So inside ProPresenter, you'll see we have our playlist here and the first thing we need to do is add our walk-in lights to our announcement loop. So our pre-show, we have our announcement loop going and we want our walk-in in lighting so we'll add that lighting cue there and then we'll go to our first song and on our first slide with our motion background we're going to add in our song one lighting cue and then for good grace we'll go in and we'll add our song two lighting cue and waymaker will add our song three lighting cue now we can see this in action. So when I click on my announcement loop, you'll see that it's on walk-in just like it currently is. But when I go to Living Hope and click on that, we'll get our motion background and our lighting changes here on stage. And when I go to Good Grace, you'll see that our motion background will start up here and our lighting will change to a purple color. And when we go to Waymaker, our lighting again will change along with our background. Now, if we want to make a change to this, maybe we're using Waymaker on another week and it's not song three, it's song one. Well, it's really easy to change that. All we need to do is right click on this slide and we can go edit actions and we can edit our macro and just change it from song three to maybe song one. And so now when I select this slide, it's going to trigger our song one lights. And to update our uh, light key, maybe we wanna change what this looks like. I'll select song one and I'll change this from yellow and maybe we wanna change this to teal. So I can just drag that in there. And now this teal color is gonna be triggered when we select song one. And we can always go back to our show controls and trigger any of these lighting cues manually. So we can go and click on lights walk-in at any time and it will switch our lighting over to our walk-in lights for us. So we now have ProPresenter controlling light key, making it super easy for your operator to not only control your presentations, but also your lighting. Now this is all on the same computer. Light key is a very lightweight program that can easily run in the background on the same computer. But if you needed to have them on separate computers, how would you do that? Well, the next thing that we're gonna look at is how to control MIDI over your network. And this takes a couple quick steps on two different computers. So I'm I'm gonna grab another computer that I have here and we're gonna look at how to get this set up so that we can control light key on one computer from ProPresenter on another. So the first thing that we need to do is go to search and we're gonna search our Mac for an application called Audio MIDI Setup. And when we launch that, we'll see all of the audio devices, but we wanna see all of our MIDI devices. So we're gonna to go to Window and we're gonna show MIDI Studio. Now this is showing all of the local MIDI devices, but we actually wanna see the network MIDI devices. So we'll go to MIDI Studio and open Network MIDI Setup. Here we can set up a different sessions to connect different computers together to send MIDI information across the network. So I'm gonna add a new session, I'm gonna enable it. We could rename the session if we wanted to, but we don't need to do that. The most important thing we need to do is rename this computer. So I'm gonna name this my light key computer. And then I wanna make sure that this computer can see anyone and can connect to anyone. So I'll set that to anyone. And then now on my remote ProPresenter computer, I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna search again for MIDI and we're gonna to go to our audio MIDI setup. We're gonna to go to window, show MIDI studio. And then under MIDI studio, we're gonna open our MIDI network setup. Now you can see that my light key computer is showing up and now we can add a session, enable it, and then we're gonna name this one our ProPresenter computer. And so now each computer is seeing each other and I can now connect to this. So I'm gonna again set this to anyone. 
I'm gonna choose light key and say connect. So now session one is connected to the light key computer. And on the light key computer, you can see that we're connected to the ProPresenter computer. And so these are uh, both connected to each other. So now on our ProPresenter computer, we can launch ProPresenter. And now we can go to ProPresenter and Preferences and Devices, and this is where we can set up our MIDI device. So we're gonna say MIDI, just like we did before, and this is our light key connection, so we're gonna call it light key, auto reconnect, and here we're gonna select session one as our destination. And then we can go back and connect that. So now we're connected, and now we can add in our macro. So I'm gonna add in my lights, song one, and I'm gonna right click and add an action, communication, light key, MIDI note on, just like we did before. And again, we're gonna set our intensity to one and we'll use that C2 value. And if we go back to our other computer, you'll see that when I select song one, nothing's gonna happen because we actually have to add a new trigger. So uh, I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna say external control, add trigger. And now we're gonna click on lights one and you'll see that it's received that. And if we look at our triggers for song one, you'll see that we have a light key trigger. That was the one from the local ProPresenter input. And now we have this network session one trigger that's from our remote ProPresenter. So now I can select song one on my remote computer and it will control light key on my main computer. So that's how you can connect two different computers together to send MIDI across your network. Now here are a couple reminders to help you avoid common issues. First, when you add a MIDI device in ProPresenter, make sure to set it to reconnect. And in light key, when you're adding external triggers, make sure to change them from that default of toggle to activate to avoid your lights being turned off if you trigger that cue more than one time. And finally, be super clear with your operators. Make sure they know when they're clicking a slide, now they're not just controlling ProPresenter, they're actually controlling things outside ProPresenter. They're changing the lights. And so just be really clear that they know that they're triggering more than just one thing when they select that slide. But now you know how to use ProPresenter to control lighting to create amazing presentations.